guys, welcome to It's Pretty by Lori. My name is Lori for those who are new here. Those who are new, you can find It's Pretty by Lori on all social medias and I would love to connect with you. I am a retired hairstylist turned mom of a beautiful two year old and I'm a beauty enthusiast. So I'm here to show you all the deets about all the things that I like. Those who are returning, thank you so much for subscribing to my channels. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you my review on the Revlon Volume Styler. So I see a lot of uh, reviews or first impressions of, of products, which are great. Um, but when it comes to this particular um, device or hair styler, um, when I first opened it, it did take me a minute to kind of get used to it. And I didn't want to jump in and give you a first impression that was negative how to use it, then why should I talk negatively about it? So I used it a couple of times and like I said, I was a hairstylist, so the way I do hair um, is a little bit backwards because I'm used to someone standing in front of me or sitting in front of me. So doing my own hair was just, you know, it's, you know, it's the luxury of being a hairstylist. Somebody else is always doing your hair. Um, because when there's downtime, that's what you do. What I want to do is I want to show you how I'm using the Revlon Styler and the little tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the entire time that I've been a hairstylist on how to keep your hair healthy as well. A couple things before I get started as far as um, tips to keep your so hair healthy. So the Revlon Styler has a setting. It has off, cool, low, and high. And to be honest with you, all of those settings are not necessarily cool. They're all, at some degree, hot. If things are too hot for you, I would definitely use some sort of um, glove, if you have like a glove from a wand or something. Also, you're always gonna want to um, protect your hair with some sort of heat protectant. And that's just a general rule when it comes to styling at all. If you're using flat iron, blow dryer, or anything, if you have especially if you have fine hair, chemically treated hair, um, any kind of hair that is a little bit more fragile, then you're gonna wanna use some sort of heat protecting. So what I'm using right here is from Kenra. It's called the Smoothing Blowout Lotion. And it is to, it um, has four days without frizz. It's really, really, really frizzing. So four days is like a dream. I did two pumps. My hair is not soaking wet, but it does have moisture in it still. Um, when I get out of the shower, I don't put my hair up in a turban. And the reason is, is that causes more friction in your hair and your hair is already tangled. So why create more tangle in your hair? So what I do is I wrap my towel around my hair. If that makes sense, I take my towel and I wrap it like this, or like that. And that's how I usually get out of the shower. Um, and like I said, because and that's because if you don't, you're gonna cause more tangles. Tangles are not good for your hair. Your hair is wet. It's 50% more delicate than it would be if it was dry. And so when it's wet, you wanna be really careful not to pull the hair. And when you have tangles, you're gonna pull your hair. So you wanna minimize the creation of tangles so that's one of the tips and then I condition the, the doodles out of my hair all the time so I don't have many tangles as far as that is concerned and then when you're detangling your hair I use a wet brush and also what that's doing is helping to um, distribute the product through the hair all right so let's go ahead and get this. so Usually when I blow dry my hair, what I would do is I will take horseshoe sections like so. And then um, you can either use like a butterfly clip or you can use a rubber band. My, the best option for me is one of these alligator clips. You get them at most pieces. So I'm just gonna pop it there. So you see how I kind of started at my ears and pulled it up. So like right below the occipital. So I'm gonna split down the hair down the middle, like so. And then turn on the tool. 
So like I said, it says cool, low, and high. If you have fine hair, you don't need to go any higher than the low setting. The low setting is actually pretty hot. The cool setting is not cool. I mean, if you let it sit on your hair for a very long time, it might eventually get to cool, but my tool doesn't turn cold. Be careful, like I said, because of the heat element of it, if you don't have a protectant on your hair, you will you will find that over time, your ends will get a little bit more fragile, so be careful. My hair is kinky curly hair, so I'm going to the high setting, which is hot, okay? And I'm used to touching hot things and using hot tools to create styles, so my hands aren't as sensitive to the heat. But again, as I said, if you are sensitive to the heat, please wear a glove or turn it to low. So I just wanted to point out, you see how I'm holding my styler at the base of my root? It's always important to make sure that you focus most of your blow drying at your root. The reason being is because the root is more healthy and therefore it absorbs more moisture, so it's going to take more time to um, dry. The more moisture left in your hair when you're done styling, the frizzier your hair is going to end up in the long run. So when you're blow drying, just for anybody, for anybody who has hair, <laughs> fine hair, coarse hair, um, long hair, short hair, the moisture at the base or at the root of your hair is going to um, be more saturated than that of your ends. So focus your main part or the bulk part of your work at your roots. So I'm taking horizontal sections going up the back of my head. To do that, I take my thumbs and I just kind of run them around my head till they meet in the back. And then I'm taking one side and then I'll take the next. So as I said before, make sure that you focus mainly on your roots when you start out and then um, go to the ends. The ends are dry, pretty much dry at this point. Um, so the roots need more attention. Um, keep things nice and organized because that'll help you to create a more cohesive, sleeker look. I did notice that when I had the styler on the high setting, it was getting too hot for me when I was holding it close to my scalp. So I did turn it to low so I can hold it closer to my roots. And you can see how I'm kind of going back and forth on the section that's going to give you a more natural look in the end. You always want to make sure that the section that you're using is also detangled. If it's tangled in any way, it might get caught in your styler. So go ahead and make sure that you brush it out nicely if it feels like it's going to be tangled. You can tell that I'm using um, the knob that's at the very end of the styler, which is really helpful. It's got a good nice grip on it, it's not too slippery, and it helps me to really achieve that tension that I want. Tension is really good for those who have super, super curly hair. The flatter or the straighter you can get that section while the heating elements on it, the better the result.
So when I'm doing the back of my hair, obviously it's a lot harder to see what I'm doing. So I kind of just feel my way around and I feel like I get better results doing that because when I'm feeling it, I can feel that the hair is smoother. So you can see how I'm taking the styler and I'm almost kind of gently, but with a lot of tension, kind of scratching my scalp. And that's going to ensure that you're going to get a little bit more of a, more of a smoother finish. So you see how I'm kind of scratching it on the nape of my neck and holding the hair flat. That's going to help a lot. And I just kind of feel for the different bumps on the back of my head to see if there's somewhere else that I need to um, run over. Remember, tension is good. You want to make sure that there's tension. Don't panic if your styler gets tangled in your hair. All you have to do is turn it off and then de take the device out of your hair. So you see how I'm winding my hair up into the styler? That's what I mean, kind of winding the hair up, making sure that you have good tension and then pulling. I could even leave my styler on my root just a little bit longer so that there's a longer lasting finish. But I think that's a really good technique to make sure that everything is nice and uniform and smooth. And it's easier to pull your arms down than to pull your arms up, I think. To less pressure on your shoulders, your neck. This is an optional step, but what I'm doing is I'm taking an extra alligator clip and just clipping the bottom half of my hair out of the way. It helps to kind of keep things organized, as I said before, so you get a better, better result in the end. So the top of my hair, I'm just gonna freehand it. Instead of taking section by section, I'm really just going to take whatever the styler picks up and I'm gonna pull my hair in a lot of different directions and this is gonna give me a more natural look. If I were to pull everything down one way and then part it in a certain way, then it's gonna look like more of a helmet rather or a wig rather than my natural hair growing out of my head. So you'll see how I kind of pull it this way and that way and I put the brush on top and then on the bottom and then I grab all of the hair at once and I kind of bring it all together. So it all is um, naturally flowing, if that makes sense.
I started the process of actually blow drying my hair, which is kind of funny. Um, I think at like 11 minutes and something seconds, and I know I've like sped up some of it, so I want to give you an accurate like time. Let's see. First of all, let's look to see how it looks in the back. I feel, I can't see it, but I feel like it's not too bad. It's got maybe right here and it's a little bit more long. Let's see if So I started at 11 and a half minutes and it's 36.10 minutes, which means it took me 26 minutes to do my hair, which is like literally record. It usually will take me 45 minutes to get my hair straight. And that means blow dry and flying. So easily it easily cuts the time in almost half almost half um but that you know how it works this is the result you saw my hair before so really quite curly and i'll go ahead and like include a picture right here so you can see what my hair looks like typically and then here is the final Look, let me lower my camera so you can see the bottom. So I have recently cut my hair. I feel like I've need to cut my hair like so much lately. It's been growing so fast. But I've cut my hair so it looks really nice on the ends. And I cut my bangs a little bit so things lay a little bit better kind of around my face. And ta-da, this is the final look. So I guess what I want to say is I know you see a lot of people do um, first impressions of tools and stuff like that and I think it's good to do that because people can see what the product looks like or the tool looks like and how it works but sometimes those first impressions aren't necessarily uh, positive because um, it does take time to learn how to use the device or the tool or the hair product or the face cream or whatever it is and I don't want you to take your um, style at home and try it one time and think okay well that sucked because I've been a hairstylist since I was 19 years old I'm 37 now. I've seen hair for a very long time and one of my specialties was pulling curly curly hair really really straight when I went to go and do my own hair it took me a minute to use to figure out how to use this tool and so I didn't want to bring it to you with that intention. I wanted to bring the tool to you to show you how you want to use it to optimize the, um, the experience. So, there you go. Um, if you found this tutorial slash review slash episode to be um, helpful, please go ahead and like um, down in the comment section below. Again, you can follow me either on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all places at It's Pretty by Lori. Um, and I would love to uh, communicate more if you have any questions about any of the products that I'm using in today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Mwah.